How strong are nuclear explosions exactly? Around 19 kilotons of explosive energy were unleashed at the US's Trinity test in 1945, the first nuclear explosion ever. Before unleashing a fierce heat wave throughout the desert, the explosion instantaneously destroyed the tower it was standing on and transformed the surrounding sand into green glass. After World War II, the US and the Soviet Union conducted bomb tests with explosive strength of at least 500 times larger as the Cold War heated up. Currently, China, France, the United Kingdom, India, Pakistan, North Korea and Israel all possess nuclear weapons in addition to the United States and Russia, which each possess hundreds of them. Fears that such nuclear weapons would be utilized and wreak havoc on the human world are on everyone's mind. In this video, we're going to take a look at the most powerful nuclear explosions ever caught on camera just to see how terrifying they really can get. Tsar Bomber, also known as Big Ivan, required a specially constructed aircraft because it was too massive to be transported by regular planes. To give the plane enough time to take off, the bomb was fastened to a huge parachute. A 34-mile or 55-kilometer away abandoned settlement was destroyed by the explosion, which produced 50,000 kilotons and a 5.0 to 5.25 magnitude earthquake was caused in the neighborhood. It was initially intended to be a 100,000 kiloton bomb, but the Soviet Union reduced its yield to half of that. Six times the flight height of commercial aircraft, or more than 37 miles or 60 kilometers, Tsar Bomber's mushroom cloud broke through the stratosphere. The pilot's fate was far from assured despite these safety precautions. They had a 50-50 probability of surviving the explosion. However, the pilots did live. Although sufficiently enough from the explosion's core, their bomber lost height after getting sucked up in the shockwave and dropped by around 1,000 meters. A plume of smoke and ash ascended nearly 40 miles into the sky not long after the explosion. A 5.0 earthquake measuring from the epicenter was reported on Richter scales all across the world. Soldiers in Norway could see the explosions flash and the blast's radioactive fallout was widely dispersed. The amazing explosion was captured by one of the observation plane's camera operators in the hair-raising manner described below. The clouds beneath the aircraft and in the distance were lit up by the powerful flash. The sea of light spread under the hatch and even clouds began to glow and become transparent. At that moment, our aircraft emerged from between two cloud layers and down below in the gap, a huge bright orange ball was emerging. The ball was powerful and arrogant like Jupiter. Slowly and silently, it crept upwards. Having broken through the thick layer of clouds, it kept growing. It seemed to suck the whole Earth into it. The spectacle was fantastic, unreal, supernatural. The explosion had enormous diplomatic repercussions, particularly for the US and nearby Scandinavian nations. It didn't matter in the end since the Tsar bomber was too big to ever be useful. Without extensive refueling assistance and modifications to the airframes to carry and drop such massive payloads, Soviet bombers were simply too far away to reach city-sized targets in the United States. The Tsar bomber did, however, assist Moscow to achieve one strategic goal. It shocked and surprised the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, which in turn helped lead to the 1963 Partial Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, which banned nuclear tests in the ocean, space and atmosphere. Thankfully, the bomb was never manufactured. The destructive potential of current nuclear weapons is truly unimaginable, and as history has shown, the results can be unforeseeable. As part of Operation Ivy, the United States dropped the Mike Bomb, the world's first hydrogen bomb in 1952. Atomic bombs employ nuclear fission to provide explosive energy, but hydrogen bombs use nuclear fusion to increase their explosions. The Ivy Mike test, which weighed 140,000 pounds or 63,500 kilograms, 
produced a yield of 10,400 kilotons or the explosive force of 10.4 million tons of TNT. In comparison to Little Boy, the bomb unleashed on Hiroshima in 1945, the explosion was 700 times more intense. It exploded on the surface of the Marshall Islands in New Attack Atoll. The Korean War was in full swing when it exploded, and the US and Soviet Union were engaged in a nuclear arms race. An article on the Atomic Heritage Foundation website noted that the Truman administration debated whether to develop the hydrogen bomb, with some officials pushing against it and others pushing for it. President Truman ultimately decided to build it. In a test known as Castle Bravo, the United States detonated a 15-megaton nuclear weapon on the Bikini Atoll on the Marshall Islands on March 1, 1954. It is the fifth most powerful nuclear bomb detonation in history and was detonated on the ground as opposed to being dropped from the air. The US mistakenly tested the most potent nuclear bomb with Castle Bravo, the first of the Castle Operation series. According to a 2017 article by the Atomic Heritage Foundation, the yield was about two and a half times greater than anticipated and caused nuclear fallout to cover about 7,000 square miles, that's 18,130 square kilometers, across the Pacific, exposing residents of the Marshall Islands, US military personnel, and the crew of a Japanese fishing trawler to high levels of radiation. The Marshall Islands population experienced a higher than average rate of cancer and some individuals had to be evacuated. Remnants of the blast were found in Australia, India, Japan and Europe. Global demonstrations against nuclear bomb testing were started as a result of the Castle Bravo test and the damage it caused to the locals. The American government eventually provided compensation to island residents. Nevertheless, retired American military soldiers filed a lawsuit against the government in 1984, claiming that the administration had minimized the radioactive risk. The US nuclear experiments known as Operation Castle, which took place in the Marshall Islands, included Castle Romeo. Romeo was the first test ever carried out on a barge in the ocean, because shockingly, the US was running out of islands to perform tests on. The Bikini Atoll was the site of the explosion of this nuclear bomb on a barge. The test's explosive energy, which was estimated to be 4,000 kilotons, was more than doubled to 11,000 kilotons. One of the most famous pictures of a nuclear explosion ever taken is of its fireball, which may be seen in the image below. A nuclear bomb airburst of this intensity over Central Park in New York City would, according to NukeMap, result in a fireball that would blanket the park and a wave of severe thermal radiation that would reach as far as Port Chester. A 12.5 megaton bomb, or almost 830 times as strong as the bomb that destroyed Hiroshima, was detonated on the Novaya Zemlya archipelago by the Soviet Union on October 23, 1961. It is the seventh most potent nuclear weapon to have ever been detonated. It was referred to as Test 123 and served also as a practice run for the Tsar bomber, which detonated nearby a week later. Before the nuclear test, there were not many people living on this archipelago. These individuals hunted and trapped. With its 12 and a half thousand kilotons of explosive energy, the bomb was able to completely vaporize everything in its 2.1 mile, that's three and a half kilometer, blast radius. Another nuclear device exploded on a barge next to the Bikini Atoll on May 5th, 1954. The yield from Castle Yankee's test was 13.5 megatons. Within four days of the explosion, the fallout had traveled 7,100 miles, that's 11,400 kilometers, to Mexico City. The fifth test of Operation Castle was Castle Yankee. The explosion was the second most potent nuclear test conducted by the United States. It is almost 900 times more potent than the nuclear bomb unleashed on Hiroshima, making it the sixth most potent nuclear weapon ever to be detonated in history. Global pressure would increase in the years that followed for a ban on nuclear tests to be implemented. 
A lagoon is encircled by the coral reef known as the Bikini Atoll. On the atoll, there were inhabitants before the nuclear tests. The atoll is still contaminated by radioactive fallout remnants. Therefore, the population was evacuated before the testing and has never been permitted to return. The Novaya Zemlya archipelago was hit by a 19.1 megaton nuclear bomb that the Soviet Union dropped on September 25, 1962. It is roughly 1,270 times more powerful than the Hiroshima bomb and the fourth most powerful nuclear weapon ever to be detonated. This bomb was just known as Test 173 and never acquired a moniker. Interesting fact, the Cuban Missile Crisis, which put the Soviet Union and the United States on the verge of nuclear war, started a few weeks after this bomb was launched. The Soviet Union sent nuclear missiles to Cuba during the crisis. Kennedy debated attacking the facilities but decided against it, and instead ordered a naval blockade to stop more nuclear weapons from getting to Cuba. In the end, the United States agreed to remove its nuclear missiles from Turkey in exchange for the Soviet Union removing the missiles. The Novaya Zemlya archipelago was hit by a 21.1 megaton bomb dropped by the Soviet Union on August 5, 1962, which is part of the Russian Arctic. It is simply referred to as Test 147, the third most powerful nuclear explosion in history, again not earning a moniker like the Tsar bomber did. The bomb dropped on Hiroshima was nearly 1,400 times more powerful than this one. This nuclear explosion is not as well known as some of the others on this list, despite its enormous power. This kind of nuclear weapon, if airburst over Central Park in New York City, would create a fireball that would completely engulf the park as well as a powerful thermal radiation wave that would completely engulf the entire city and extend as far as Stamford, New York. The Novaya Zemlya archipelago, home to the second largest glacier complex in the Arctic, was the test site for a rather unpleasant Christmas present that the Soviet Union dropped over on December 24, 1962. A nuclear weapon detonated in Test 219, an atmospheric nuclear test employing an intercontinental ballistic missile, ICBM, 2.3 miles, that's 3.8 kilometers, above sea level. Although this nuclear bomb's 24.2 megatons made it less powerful than the Tsar bomber bomb by more than 50%, it was nevertheless the second most powerful nuclear weapon ever to go off. Additionally, it is 1,600 times stronger than the Hiroshima bomb. It didn't receive a distinctive moniker like the Tsar bomber because it was the second most powerful nuclear weapon. It is simply known as Test 219. It is one of the last nuclear bombs to be dropped from an aircraft by the Soviet Union. Subsequent tests were carried out underground as a result of a test ban pact that forbade above-ground testing in 1963. Estimates for the Hiroshima bomb hover around 15 kilotons in contrast. There were a lot of high-energy blasts, according to documents from the Russian Federation's Ministry of Defense and the U.S. Department of Energy. Nevertheless, only those nuclear weapon detonations whose yields are certain to be known are included in this list, because a number of them have uncertain yields. These massive explosions are all a great deal more potent than the ones that were used to destroy Hiroshima and Nagasaki at the end of World War II. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more incredible videos.